Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullah to all the viewers, what is going on? We're back at it again, man. How I learn Arabic stories with my brother Muntasir, Al Munawar, Al Sudani. And I'm joking, what is, how, how should we call you, Muntasir? You know, I'm Muntasir. People call you Muntasir, yeah? No, yeah. Okay, from, from, from West London. Yes. Right. Okay. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, so you you guys know how it goes. Uh, you know, I bring you guys uh, nice stories in terms of how people learn the Arabic language, and uh, and the main purpose is for you guys, for all of you guys, for all of you young Muslims starting to even even old Muslims. Subhanallah. We just you know we just got a, a new student in in our Arabic bro. He's sixty one years sixty one years old. So you know what I mean? It's never, it's never too late. It's never, never too late. late. Not exactly. Never too late. Mainly in the, in terms of uh, talab al ilm, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Never too late. So, uh, so you guys know how it goes. I ask them questions, and you guys benefit from it. So I'm gonna go straight into it and ask al akh Muntasir. Now, in terms of of Muntasir, it's a little bit different, okay? Because then you guys will 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 hear now why is it different. And uh, and it's very interesting, inshallah. So I'm a I'm a first start with um, with uh, with a question for Montasir, and I will ask him to introduce himself and uh, give us a little bit of context uh, about yourself, inshallah. Khair, inshallah. Bismillah, Allah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah. Tabi lamin wa baad. First of all, I need to like to thank you. As the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, May Allah shukran nasi, Allah shukran Allah. Whoever is not thankful to the people, won't be thankful to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So Zakhla khair for opening up your platform. Allowing us to all come over here and share our stories, and inshallah, will be an inspirational and motivational and educational for those who are looking within this Um Yeah, I mean, briefly about myself. Um, I was brought up in, born and brought up in West London, mm. and I was in a household where I was always speaking Arabic. I was brought up speaking Arabic at home, like in as which is that which is known. Every person from whatever Arabic speaking country, they have their own dialect. No. Some dialects are better than others. And some are closer to Fusha, some are quite far from Fusha. Mm. So I was brought up speaking a dialect at home, and that's the only thing I knew. I didn't even know Fusha existed when I was a kid. I didn't really know about it. I just thought every Arabic speaking country just had their own type of style. Nah. Like when I got a bit older, I got into my teens, uh, I got a lot more interested into the deen. I decided I wanted to start reading the books of the ulama, start listening to the ulama, and be able to seek knowledge in the deen. And mm -hmm. I remember a few times I'd open some of the books and I'd actually like I'd read a few words, I'd recognize a few words, and I'm thinking, what's that? What does that mean? Yeah. I've never come across that. I've never used that at home. Yeah. Like in um, so then I learned about Fushawas and I learned about it. So I started going to going into it, and so my switch was basically that which is different to some of the other people you interviewed. It was more from Dariji, a dialect, in order, and going to Fusha. That no. was my main. That was my main switch. It wasn't from zero to Fusha. No. and there's loads of advantages and there's also disadvantages yeah. in this yeah. cloud and the way that I went. And inshallah, yeah. we can go into that later. Inshallah. So first of all, what I was thinking about right now, because I mean, obviously, Al Amiya Al Misri and Al Amiya Sudania, they are really close because being no. you know Sudan and, and Egypt before one country and then splitting up. Yeah. Uh, so. so what I wanted to do is uh like how how was what would you say was the benefits? Let me let me let me ask you for three benefits three benefits and three uh you know uh difficulties that you found in terms of going okay. from Amir to Fusha. Well one of the benefits is that was vocabulary, I'd say definitely. Because mm -hmm. you'll find that whatever dialect you have, whatever word you're using, at the end of the day they come from Fusha. They no. come from one level or another, but they've just been changed. No. So I think the, definitely the first one was, was the vocabulary. Um, I'd say another benefit was uh, was listening to muhadarat. I'll be able to understand the gist of it. So mm. I'll just, when I was listening to muhadarat and fusha, I'll be able to understand the gist of it. Um, I'd say from the other benefits was that... Uh, to be honest, I think those were the main benefits. The vocabulary, the yeah. vocabulary was the main benefits. I'll say the, the, the some of the negatives. I would say conversation that, for you, maybe. Conversation, damn. Yeah. On, that, that, that's something which helps no. a lot. It helps you speaking a lot. Uh, one of the negatives I'd say is is nahu when it comes to grammar, mm. because the grammar goes right out the window when it comes to that. 
no. it, it's completely different. Even sometimes the structure of the sentences is completely different. Uh, because when it comes to dialects, the, the words, they change mainly in two ways. Either they take a harf out, they take a letter mm. out and swap it with something else. So, for mm. example, you very rarely come across a dialect which where they use the qaf or mm. they use the that. It's either mm. hey, any the Muslim, they use it in an elif or us, we use, we'll say a ga, we we'll use the jim. Yeah. So, <laughs> the, cha- the change of the of the letters was really difficult to, and, and also understanding whether this word, does it actually come from Fusha or is it not from Fusha? So that's one of the things that took me long to yeah. actually pick up. But sometimes I'll read a word or I'll be using a word and I'll be thinking, is, is this even Fusha or is it not Fusha? No. So that was something which was quite confusing for me for quite a no. long time. But, yeah. So I wanted to ask you right now, I was about to, to write it down to not forget. Can you give us an yeah. example of of in Al-Ammiya Al-Misriya, using Al-Qaf to Al-Alif and then in, 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 in Al-Jim to, uh, to Al-Gaf. Oh, yeah. How does it sound? Uh, for example, يعني, the word Qalam. No. The word Qalam. The, the, in in Masr, they're not going to say Qalam, they say Alam. No. For, for example, if they don't say the, the pen doesn't write, they'll say al alam make tipsh something no. like that. Yeah. For, in, in Sudan, we're going to say um, Qalam. Gallop. No, it's almost yeah, like a gallop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No. So, uh, for example, the word "mawjud" in Sudan, we just say "mawjud." How is "mawjud"? Like no. in 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 Mosul, we're gonna say "mawjud." So they, <laughs> for for they change it. They change the letters no. completely. I remember yeah, when I was in uh in Alex, uh, yeah. they used to have. I think it was someone. Someone who when okay I got to Alex in to went in 2012, which is when when uh, when Mubarak fell, and so yeah. at that at that time there was a lot of people who wanted to present themselves to for the you know to be a president basically, and yeah. uh, and it was someone who kept who his slogan or whatever it was it was Rabb Rabb Rabbina Mawgood Rabbina Mawgood <laughs> and yeah. so and so us the students we kept saying that. And I think he was a Christian. And yeah. so, you know, it went, you know how brothers they are. He went all the way to the Sheikh. Ya Sheikh, fi ba'du tulab. There's students, they keep saying, Rabbi Namogu, this is permissible to say, Rabbi Namogu. And, uh, and it was funny because uh, I remember I remember learning, you know, alhamdulillah, I, I won't say I can't speak in Amiya, but inshallah, if I can't speak in Amiya, I can't speak in Amiya. So, uh, yeah. you know, I, I always try to pick this because I used to go a lot to the souk of, for the mm. kumash. I used to, to uh, you know, to sew clothes. And Tell so I would go yeah. to the souk and everything. And, uh, mm. you know, you need a me, otherwise you're going to get ripped off. So uh, I remember yeah. learning, the, learning, the, re- learning the rules like you just say, for example, like, tipsh. And I kept saying, no, I'm the the nephi is at the end. Different. Where's it come from? Uh? <laughs> and my teacher oh, told me the nephi is, if you, if yeah. you put a sheen at the end, it becomes nephi. I said, خلاص, ما يكتبش. ما فهمش subhanallah exactly. so um, yeah so uh and i would say i would say right i mean now right now for example being in in mauritania i would say that uh the Al-Amiya al-misri and Al-Amiya, uh sudania they are really close to to uh to fusha you know, no, I mean, it's one of the closest. There's some of the closest in, no. in comparison yeah. with uh with morocco and uh in Tunis, places like the this. thing about Al Maghrib Al Arabi, a lot of them they have French involved in it, and no. they also like Amazigh and some some other languages over there. Yeah, but bad the KB, some so some of the words they don't even root from the Arabic language, whereas mm-hmm. most of the other dialects, the, the the word roots from the Arabic language, the Fusha, in on one level or another. I think yeah. that's the main difference. Yeah, because yeah. I was thinking right now when you said most of the vocabulary comes from the Arabic language. And it's true, most of the vocabulary. And then I kept saying, uh, it came to my mind the word how they how they call a uh, a car here, basically. So here, no. car is a watta, watta. And I and I kept trying to make the connection to the Arabic language. I was, what the heck is watta? And then yeah. someone explained to me that it comes from auto. I think it was a comment uh, on YouTube, auto, okay. and it's basically from from French, basically automobile. Yeah. You know, so it yeah, went from auto, 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 what Allah, Allah. I feel happy, Laura, khalas. So, subhanallah, it's, uh, it's incredible when it comes to languages, man. I really like languages, man. Anyway, so, uh, so, uh, right, when you, when you, so how, how was the process of you 
obviously you mentioned that you know you started to wanting to uh, to 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 learn more about the ulama and and and, and get and and get more serious about your your Islamic studies. So how did all that process happen? Was it one night to another or? To be honest, uh, it happened where once I remember I went back to Sudan and uh, I would I'd be speaking to my cousins and everything would be, be going good. I understand everything. And then as soon as I go to the Jum'a Khutbah, I'll be I'll be completely baffled. No. I, I, I wouldn't even understand. What's, I understand some of what's being said. I understand the gist of it. The majority of the words, it was like a, a complete foreign to me. So uh, I came back and I decided I just need to start. I just need to go into Fusha. I just need to expose myself to it. And I found that the best way of doing it was just exposing myself to it. I just kept on listening, kept on listening, kept on picking up words and realizing where they came from and realizing, oh, this word I've been using all my life is actually yeah. from that word. And mm -hmm. I started catching, getting links together like that. So that's that's the mainly how it went. Yeah. So was you always uh, like did your parents brought you up as a, you know, they push you to practice or was yeah, that something you started to do? Alhamdulillah, my parents they also they always push me to practice. My dad always used to give the rus and khutab in the local masajid. So that was something where I always had that push. I always had that push and that encouragement to uh, read Quran, memorize Quran, learn the Arabic language. But I never really found any organized type of dirasa where I can go into it and focus on my dirasa fully and go on to I need to, the to go levels up and up I never really found that so no. but that encouragement was always there alhamdulillah I was always no. pushed to, encourage to learn it alhamdulillah. okay alhamdulillah so so uh, where about did you learn uh, the fusha once you decided to, to I started off I started off with myself so I, I just went into books I started reading loads of books. I started listening to loads of ulama, uh, and then after that, I travel. I went. I went back to Sudan. I went to Sudan, and I studied with some of the. I studied over there privately with some of the shiur for mm -hmm. quite a few months. I, I took a gap year um, after my A levels, and I went over there. And then also, I went to to Egypt. The reason why I went to Egypt after is because I had too many distractions in Sudan. When I go to Sudan, no. I, I'll go over there. Why didn't you visit me? Why didn't you come to me? And so, yeah, I didn't come. So, <laughs> I didn't come to socialize, I came to study. So yeah. if I go to Egypt, I have no except there's nobody that can throw me up. And even then, even though when I was there, people were still telling me, listen, you should cross the border and you're right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just decided to go over there so I could focus on my studies. And even though I didn't spend too long in Egypt, I didn't spend long, um, but I was able to pick up a lot in a very small amount of time. And I was mm -hmm. able to improve my Arabic greatly. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, so it sounds to me like you, you, was, you was visiting from a young age Sudan very often. Yeah, I used to visit like every two, three years, mm. but then there was a period where I didn't visit for 10 years. Like okay. I was from the age of, yeah, there was a period where I didn't visit for around 10 years. So then my Arabic was extremely weak. It became very weak because mm. even though I speak Arabic at home, I'd normally just speak it to my parents. And that's what happens often to you. For your siblings, you just speak the language which you were brought up speaking in your no. country. So that's the only real time where I had an opportunity to practice my, my conversation was with my parents. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what was the method once you got to uh, to Sudan and you started to mm. to uh, to learn with uh, your with teacher Khas? Was it the same method that you use in Sudan and in and in Egypt? Basically, it was basically exactly the same. In Sudan, I was focusing a bit more on conversation, um, but it was the same in Egypt. And in Egypt, I I went through the Arabic Bani Adik books. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, would would read the books, uh, the the text, and we'll take the the words out, they extract the words out, and you know, sorry for the kalima, the madi, the mudar, etc. Well, then we'll put it in a jumla. We we'll put it in a jumla and put it in a sentence, and then after you just, and then he went into a lot of Arab. One thing you'll find with the Arabic speaking people is that they need to have a lot of work on their grammar, on their nahu. So yeah. mainly was using the Arabic Bani date books and. Focusing on on Nahu. that was the main focus. No. And that's the thing I feel like most need to focus on. Those who already know some Arabic, it's very important to focus on that. No, it's. Not, I mean, there's exactly the same the same method we use in uh, in uh, in Andalus Institute, basically. So let me guess what what Marcus, you, you went to a Marcus in Madrid. No, no, I went. I, no, I decided to go Khas. And oh, okay. There was bit, there was many reasons why I decided to go Khas. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we can go into that later. Honestly, yeah, we can. Talk about it later, inshallah. But I decided to go, Khas, just just so I can have the focus on me. Yeah. 
Okay, so tell me about that. So you you went to how? First of all, how did you find context to go to Egypt? Where to study? Where do you used to live in Egypt? I, I went to Nasser City. I already knew of okay. loads of brothers uh, that had had gone. My neighbor actually had gone as well from and, London. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah from london yeah mm -hmm. so i was wondering i was wondering what, what i should do and i phoned i phoned him up and he spoke about the situation and i heard it's a very good environment to learn because there's loads of students coming from all over the world so mm -hmm. when i uh when i had the opportunity and you know, i'd never traveled before to egypt so i thought why not something something new so yeah. alhamdulillah i decided to to go over there i thought it was different and benefited okay so why did you decide to go khas even though i think it was the best decision you made for yourself okay. I'll say I decided to go khas mainly because um, I've already, I think for a beginner, the main thing is to go in, in a classroom setting. I think it's better. But mm -hmm. I think for somebody who has some khalfiya, he has a background in Arabic language, mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to be slowed down by any other student. You no. did, uh, a teacher can just tailor the teaching exactly to what you need. So yeah. he can test you, he can look at what, what's, what's good for you, what you, what you need, what you don't need, and he can focus on you. That's the main thing, that's the main reason why I decided to go class. Also, I wasn't there for a long period of time where I, I like it. If I go into an institute, I'd want to finish it all. I'd want mm -hmm. to spend a year and a half or however long it takes to finish it and do that. But I wasn't able to go for that long. Uh, so I decided to go class and alhamdulillah, I've, I've benefited a lot more because as long as you pick the right teacher, yeah. You can focus all on you and everything's tailor-made for you. Alhamdulillah, I think that's the best best choice to make. So how do you find uh, how do you find a teacher for people you know who maybe decide, oh, I want to do that as well and go to, to Egypt. How do you find a teacher? Mm. I, I just asked around. I just asked people. I knew quite a few people had went and I had different recommendations. I mm -hmm. had people recommending me many different teachers. So I... Uh, I just had a recommendation for one of my brothers, one of my good friends, and he gave me the number of the teacher. Well, alhamdulillah, I started with him and I found he was good. The best mm -hmm. thing to do is, I don't think you should ask loads of people loads of different questions. Because the thing is, every every person has their own experiences. Every yeah, person has uh, has different... You tell somebody, I'm going to study with him, he's going to be like, nah, 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 he doesn't know what he's talking about. Go to this show, he's better. So, the best thing to do is focus on a couple of people that you trust and you know mm -hmm. them, and get their recommendations, and then try the teacher out for a week for five days, however long you need. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I did. I got recommended mm -hmm. the teacher by one of my friends. No. And that's how I went up. What, what was the name of the teacher? His name was Ustad Rajab. Ustad Rajab. I'm not sure Ustad if you know him because he's he's pretty he's pretty young and I think he's pretty new to teaching. How, how long ago mm -hmm. were you there? For five years. Five years ago. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, he's he's pretty he's probably in his late twenties, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he was teaching back then. I like, can mm -hmm. he was beneficial. He's good. Ustaz Ustaz Ragaba. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so um, so once you decided that, okay, you know, I want to learn Fusha and yeah. I need to start, I need to go to this class or to this teacher or whatever, what was you anxious about anything? Mm. Uh, I think the main thing I was anxious about was, was not knowing uh, whether the word the the structure of the sentence, the structure of the word, using it in the right context, you, knowing if the word even has an asal in the language. Because very often I'll be speaking to my teacher and I use a language and la 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 so, so uh, okay. So we spoke about the method you use, mm -hmm. and how long do you do you study in? Like, how long will you say? Are you still studying right now, or was it like a? I'm studying my, right now, but I'm focus? studying mainly on myself, mainly, mainly by myself. No, I'm, yeah, alhamdulillah, I'm, like, I'm able to go through the books and some of the shuroh of the of the books online. Uh, with some of the um, ulama, alhamdulillah, I'm studying mainly yeah. with myself. I realize that you get to a level sometimes where you just need to keep exposing, keep going at it, keep going at it. And then once you do that, you get to a better level. And you buy it by yourself, alhamdulillah. Yeah. yeah, many times people, they ask me, okay, what do you mean by by you became fluent in Arabic in 10 months? And what I mean yeah. by that is, is exactly what you mean. I mean, you get to a point where... Where you literally have all the... You, you don't know all the language in 10 months. So, even in one year, even two, five. It doesn't you're, matter. You're never going to know all the language. Exactly. You always find somebody on a higher level than you. Always. Now, but the thing is, there's, it gets to one point where you 
Well, the only thing you need to do is really, is really just read, you know. No. And there will be words you don't know, and that's when that's that's the person who's fluent. The person who's not fluent knows how to how to enrich himself because he's able to you know look for the tasrif. Okay, what's this word? Uh, whatever. In, mm. in in Bahara. Okay, yeah. it comes from Bahara. Okay, let me look in the dictionary. But okay, this means this. Okay, I can understand now the explanation in Arabic of the word. You know, exactly. and uh, yeah. and that's I mean that's the point where any any student should mm. want to, you know, to 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 be basically, and that's I mean that's that's what I train my students to be in 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 twelve months. You can definitely yeah. I mean even in less, but you can definitely get in twelve months to this point where you yeah I, I was just living with a brother. Yeah, so I was living with a brother, and he when I went there, he'd been there for like eight months. And we had a rule where you can't speak anything other than Arabic in the house. Mm. And he he was basically fluent. In in eight nine months, he was basically nah. fluent. But he was nah. serious, like serious. He had nah. he had he he had the teacher, private teacher, and he went to Americas. And I think mm. he might have had two private teachers. Nah, so nah, nah. eight nine ten in a year, you can learn a great amount. No, nah. underestimate that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you focus on it, it's crazy. So uh, so how many aha moments do you have? Throughout your process of learning the fusha, I, you know, I had loads of those. Loads of those simply because I'm coming from where I already know some Arabic, mm. and I knew a word, and I'm thinking, and, I, and I've been told, oh, that word you pronounce it like that. Actually, it's not actually mm. supposed to be like that. Or, for example, uh, the word like in adab, for example, qalil al adab. That, mm. for, that, for example, that word, I never, I never knew that that was. Khalil al Adab, and we used to no. use it nice to hear when I was a kid and things like that. So mm. the mainly the uh, moments, as you said, were where I realized the words that I've been using all my life is actually a fusha word, and it actually no. came from 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 uh, from Amir, from from no. fusha Amir. That I've been using all my life. So those were the uh, moments. <laughs> so um, what is it? What is it, Amir? Khalil Khalil Adab. Yeah, Khalil yeah, Adab. <laughs> Which means yeah. 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 So very often there'll be like words where they shorten it just to make it, you know, mm. roll off the tongue a bit easier. No, bit uh, mm. I think there was a, I think it was a Sheikh Raslan, he had a book of, uh, of the words, the words in, in Amiya that actually comes from, from Fusha, like, mm. Alish, you know, Ala yeah. Ayy Shay. Ashen, ala sha'ni, dhalik, you know, things like that. And I was, subhanallah. So he's actually, his, his, his level of Arabic is very high, mashallah. I remember when I went to him, we went to him in Sukhulahad in Monofiya. And subhanallah. to be honest, even though I'm, alhamdulillah, my Arabic is a good level, you have to listen extra carefully when you're listening to him. Mm-hmm. Because he seems to use very, very high level of Arabic, mashallah. Subhanallah. Yeah. I remember after four months, in yeah. my in my full time studies of the Arabic language, I was like, oh, subhanAllah, I start to understand, you know, conversations and understand yeah. most of the khutbah and this and that. You thought you and got then, it, khalas. Yeah, and we went to a, we went to a Juma. Yeah. I, I got in there, I seen like what three hundred people sitting down. I'm like, yo. Yeah. <laughs> and then I started I started listening to the khutbah of Shirasa. And I, after the khutbah, I was I was depressed. I was like. I don't know Arabic yet. <laughs> I don't know. The Arabic. I went to was one hour as well. He has very long khutab as well. Yeah, so yeah, 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 and you're listening. Yeah. It can be disheartening for some people sometimes because you're thinking, yeah. "Oh, I've went all that journey, and it clearly shows that there's still a lot more to learn." No, yeah. Subhanallah. Okay, so do you have any specific books that you, you know, that you used to, uh, you know, for the tasrifat or whatever it might be? The the main the main books we used was um, my thing about my teachers is that they were both of them actually they were authoring books themselves they were mm-hmm. getting ready to author books themselves so they had kind of their own curriculum and they were mm-hmm. kind of using so other than Al Arabiya Bain Yadik we use Al Arabiya Bain Yadik we use obviously Al mm-hmm. um those are the main books I use other than that I generally just went into books I just literally just exposed myself to any book any any yeah. ilm books on fiqh, books on tafsir, books on hadith, I just g- grab them and I'll just, I'll just be reading them, just, just going into it, just heading no. first, just go for it. So that, that's, that was kind of my mentality for improving my vocabulary, improving my language. As for uh, the specific books, which are known, the known books, Arabiya Bain Yadik, we're using, we were using, that's what the main books were. Uh, yeah. One of the things which really pushed me to 
to go and to learn Arabic and Fusha as well was because I I was I already knew that I was partially there. I already no. had a background. And one thing that I realized I'll be reading a book, for example, or about reading the Quran, for example, mm. and I'll read it and I'll understand some of the words and I'll think that I'd understand the all of it. Well, I'll find out my understanding was actually completely wrong. And mm. as some of the people they say, I mean, there's nothing more dangerous than somebody that's halfly qualified. That's half qualified. <laughs> no. You know, you have half of faqih or half of muhaddith. Half somebody's only yeah. half qualified. It's much better actually knowing nothing and knowing that you know nothing than yeah. being halfly qualified but thinking you know the whole, you know everything. <laughs> so the, when you're I was younger, I'd everyone. Be, with Duff, yeah, I think I know. I think I'd know it because yeah, you know, I've been speaking Arabic all my life. When the reality was was completely different, and you, it's just like, for example, if you have a tabib, you have a doctor, and he he's only halfly qualified. Or you have a surgeon, and he opens up the body and he starts cutting this and attaching that to that, <laughs> and he's going to do a lot more damage than if he just left it alone. So yeah, I, definitely. He knows definitely. Thing, he doesn't know anything, and yeah. that can be extremely dangerous in the deen if you already know some Arabic, but and you think you know a lot more, and you start interpreting things, and and reality is completely different. So yeah. that's one of the things that pushed me as well was to. When I realized that there was a lot, a lot more I needed to know. No, uh, subhanAllah. I needed to make sure that I wasn't halfly qualified or just partially there. I needed to, you know, mm. get it all in. And I, yeah, I remember a humbling situation for me where uh, I, it wasn't it was an argument with a, with a brother, subhanAllah. I didn't know. So mm. at that time, I didn't know that if you musafir, I was musafir. And I went mm. behind, the, the, behind the, the imam and I prayed. Yeah. And I prayed two rakas. So if you behind, if you musafir, if you pray behind a a hadir imam, yeah, you, you follow him. You just follow. Him. So the brother came to me, and uh, you know it was in Birmingham. So the brother was kind of like, you know, a little bit like, yo, yeah, bro, like, and I felt that it hurt me, you know, like I can't yeah. tell me, but like don't slap in my face, basically. Yeah, so awesome. so then he came with the with the fatwa, sharing the and I was like, man, I know Arabic. What does the fatwa say? And I read over it like. I, <laughs> I, I I wasn't even trying to, but basically I read it and I understood wrong. And then the brother yeah. he he said you didn't have it, you didn't have understand, and then he put me put it on my face basically, or how we say in Spanish he he wiped it in your face basically. Oh, you was wrong. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, and that was humbling to me because I was like, Subhanallah, I actually I actually misunderstood the whole fatwa. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's definitely it's definitely uh, it's definitely <laughs> dangerous when you. Because, I mean, you know, I have friends, for example, in Spain who don't have a reference to ask or they don't know how to, how to do research mm. or whatever. And they ask me questions. And what I do is I, I, I do my research before I, I tell them. So imagine you, you're half qualified. You give the brother yeah. a ruling on whatever it might be. Nah, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. You have yeah, to make yeah, sure, yeah. you know, the ulama say, Rahimallah, Raja, and Ya'if Qadr Nafsihi. May Allah bless from somebody who knows their place. You have to know nah. your place. So that's very, very important. It can be very misleading. And that's, that's, that's the situation which I was in. And when I came to that realization where there was so much more I had to go and grab and get hold of, Alhamdulillah, I was. No, 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 no. Mila Shak. Okay, so. Uh, well, I was going to ask you, rate your conversational skills from 1 to 10. But actually, my question for you is going to be, هل تستطيع التكلم بالحركات كلها يعني والإعراب ما شاء الله صحيح وسليم؟ لا والله أنا يعني ما زلت يعني مبتدي. أنا أظن أنني مبتدي و... بالنسبة للنحو يعني. يعني. I في النحو لست أنا بطيء بطيء جدا وعندي أشياء كثيرة لا بد أن أتعلمها ولكن الآن أنا أفضل بكثير مما كنت قبل ثلاث سنوات مثلا نعم كني يعني ما زلت مبتدئ في في النحو الحمد لله يعني أفضل مما كنت قبل سنتين ولكن أشياء كثيرة لا بد أن أتعلمها ولكن بعد سنة أو سنتين إن شاء الله <laughs> I mean, every time. Mm -hmm. Like I say, every time, uh, every time I used to listen to Sheikh Raslan, uh, I was just be surprised how he can say, how he can not mess on on a haraka, because yeah, you can, yes. you know, I can, I can talk without even mentioning the harakat. No. And, uh, and you know you basically it's easier basically you don't have to think too much 
But I will, I will be so surprised how he can put all the harakat at the end of every sentence, make everything that is mansub, mansub, everything that is majroom, majroom. And so basically yeah. for all the viewers, what, 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 I, what I asked the brother Muntasir is, obviously his, his conversational skills in Arabic, inshallah, mi'a mi'a, yani, they are going to be 10. However, what I asked is because putting the harakat, the actual vowels at the end of every of every That's sentence, hard it, bit, so it requires some type of uh, well practice, obviously, and and yeah. being ju being just comfortable with with the gram with the grammar, basically. So uh, the problem is when when I'm from a background where I if I end up speaking like that to family or to friends, they're mm -hmm. thinking, "Yeah, where are you coming from? You always speak <laughs> like that for." <laughs> That's the issue. Because Who do you think I you are? Try and practice that. I, I can only really try and speak like that properly when I'm speaking to people who have learned Arabic new. No. But when I'm with people who are Arab, when they know that I'm from an Arabic-speaking country, no. okay, and where are you coming from? Why you speak like that? You know, yeah, 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 that's yeah. the type of thing. But yeah, it it's takes hard. it takes quite a lot of practice. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's like me, for example, to my students on the weekends we do we do uh, we do classes. It's all in Arabic, and so I yeah. might say shuft shuft, mm -hmm. and then I'm like. Shuft. Righty, or righta, and uh, and that's that's the thing. I mean, sometimes it's like you were saying, uh, you know, once you it's like, for example, learning the Quran. I remember when I got to Egypt, I learned part of Juz Amma in phone mm. phonetic in phonetical letters, basically. So yeah. Quran in English, basically in English letters. Yeah, you yeah. know, so transliteration. But yeah. yeah. Mm. So <clears throat> so you know, Ida Jaa. Yeah. E literally E D I D H A, and yeah. so uh, and so my whole you know when I went to to the to the teacher he he got even mad it was a, a Libyan teacher he was like mm. what, what are you talking about why are you why are you reciting even like this name of Quran you know? yeah. and, I, and he was you gotta you gotta you know as a as a as Mufti Muhammad Munir says you gotta empty your cup. You exactly. Do, yeah. that's, you gotta forget that's everything when it comes, and put everything. Yeah. It's a very similar concept with me, with somebody who's already has some Arabic. I, I remember my teacher in Egypt, he said the way I teach you is completely different to the way I teach uh, the other students. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because you know, Mufti Mari says I have a full cup. I already yeah. have the Amir there. Yeah, and yeah, it's a lot yeah, easier, yeah. it's a lot easier for a teacher to come and teach somebody whose cup is completely empty. He doesn't know anything. Yeah, you know? yeah. So he's got nothing there. All he's got to do is just fill it up and tell us he's got mm -hmm. what he needs to do. But for me, he needs to clean that which is already yeah. in the cup, take it all out. What you learned is wrong, you know, yeah. unlearn it. And yeah. then put in that which is and that which is beneficial. He needs yeah. to put it in. That's why the way that's one of the disadvantages which I forgot to mention earlier on, that my cup is often very full nah, when it comes nah, to learning nah, Arabic. Nah. And it's like, yeah, but I've been saying that all my life and it's like that. Nah, what you'd be saying all your life is completely wrong. Take that, no. <laughs> take that out of your head and fill no. out with the completely new information. So that's one of the disadvantages which mm. I should have mentioned there. Yeah. And it's tricky as well because as I was talking to in the last interview with Brother Abu Tamim, we were talking about how we in the West, we are exposed to so many things. And I was mm. telling him like how basically here when I see people from, from the desert, even there, like even when you talk to them, it's like they so quiet like you know mm. they not able, they wouldn't be able to maintain an uh, interview like yo like they if they look at you talking they like yo you t what is all this energy coming from like what are you talking yeah. so much like a different culture yeah, so. now, for them it's like subhanallah every super everything is super like hadi calm and basically mm. you can tell that they don't have anything in their brain they just memorize like these sponges basically and i was mm. what I, what i meant is uh what I mean by this is that I always tell my students that this method of learning the Arabic language that we use is, is the best method just because every human being uses this method. When you are a baby and you don't know nothing, mm. you start with the vocabulary, then you start connecting all the words, and then you can go into grammatical stuff and stuff if you want. Exactly. That's the thing I recommend. Lots of people, they send me messages, how do I learn Arabic? I always say focus on vocabulary first, focus on conversation, because mm. I know I've met people who can do it Arab amazingly. They'll do it Arab of the Quran sometimes, no. but they can't hold a conversation. They mm. can't speak properly. And it doesn't it doesn't make sense for you to be doing Arab or something, but you don't even know what a siyara, you don't even know what a qalam is. You don't know. It no. doesn't make sense. So no, 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 no. I think the way you go about teaching it is, is the best way. No, no, no. Alhamdulillah. So uh, what would you say? And these are the last three last questions. What would you say is the hardest thing, at least for you, in terms mm. of the Arabic language? 
Uh, I think the hardest thing will most probably be, um, and that will probably just the grammar, just mm-hmm. to fix up on the on my grammar because I remember I'd be speaking. For example, I'll give you a small example. Uh, mm-hmm. I'd say Mishetel Mishetel Souk. They have to. You supposed to say they have to in a short in a souk. So it's, it's little mm-hmm. things like that. That my whole life I've been saying it wrong and I didn't realize it was wrong. So I think the main, the, the most difficult thing for me would be probably just patching up with my grammar and also uh, just uh, practicing the actual fusha because no. the opportunity for me to practice the fusha is is seen as very, it's very, very shy. It's like, what are you doing out here? Why are you, why are you trying to speak like that? Are you, are you, are you better than us <laughs> or something like that? Where yeah. are you coming from? So that's one of the, the things which I probably find difficult. One thing I forgot to mention early, later on, I mean earlier on as to one of the reasons why I decided to go learn Fusha as well was that um, the, the situation which I am in, I was in a situation where I wouldn't be able to forgive myself if my children didn't know proper Arabi because of myself, because mm. of my negligence and because of my uh, just being negligent and lazy because yeah. the majority of Arabic speaking people in the west their first generation majority of them and no. their parent their level of arabic is nowhere near as good as their parents um, level of arabic no, so no, no. If, you, if your level of arabic is poor and you and you know the majority of people are staying in this country you know they're settling down in this country to get married in this country they're having children in this country no and no matter enough some day you're into more nobody knows when mm-hmm. they're going to die but the majority of them are dying and getting buried here no. so if you do that and you you're Arabi and you have children in this country the next generation's level of Arabic is going to be rubbish. The generation no. after that, Allahu Alam, it may be non-existent. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so I wouldn't be able to forgive myself if the reason why, inshallah, my children and their children don't know Arabic is because I was just being lazy. No. And it's not enough. It's not enough for those who are Libyan, Egyptian, wherever they're from, and they're living in the West. It's not enough to just know Lamia. Because a lot of our parents, they'll be knowing Fusha because they, they, you know, they studied Fusha in order to pass their exams in school. Mm-hmm. But for us to, even if your Amir is strong, that's not enough. Because if your Amir is strong and that's all you know, and your children are brought up in this country, and you speak to them about Amir and they know Amir, Arab is going to become Amir. That's, no, that's, no, that's no. all it's going to become. Mm. And the opposite is also true. You can be an individual who, for those that are not Arab, they don't have Arabic tongue. I met a brother, I remember in Egypt, who uh, he's Pakistani, and he spoke mm-hmm. fluent Arabic. And I was thinking, yani, what happened to you? Like, how did you guys speak fluent Arabic like that? And he was only 18, 19 years old. Mm-hmm. And he said to me, my dad was a Talib Ilm, he's Pakistani as well. But since I was a kid, he only spoke to me in Arabic. Oh. So he so he was Pakistani, and he's like any other Arabic speaking person. So the same way that you can, you can start that chain and become the reason why the next generation of Pakistanis are speaking Arabic. No. So, I said to myself, why, while I'm supposed to be just another link in the chain, passing on and carrying on that ni'mah, yeah. I would be able to forgive myself if I cut that chain out and, uh, and my parents, my children could not know Arabic just because of, just because of me. No. Uh, that, was, that was a bit of encouragement for those that are not Arab, but those who are Arab and know Arabic, it's important not to settle just for your Amir, uh, it's important to, to know your Fusha. No, alhamdulillah. Yeah. And, and this brother, did he know Urdu as well? I'm pretty sure he had a decent level of Urdu. I, I didn't. I was. I didn't ask him, but mm. I'm assuming so because his his other his distance family. They'll be speaking to him in Urdu. No, yeah, it's, it's similar because you speak quite a few languages, don't you? Yeah, this is why I'm asking you because I'm, I'm actually. It's hard for me to speak to my children in, in Spanish. You know, I would love them to ha- to know Spanish because I mean, the problem with me is that uh, the problem with me is that. So my wife is American, right? And mm. and and I've learned I've learned English from I picked up English from her. So yeah. so me talking to the children, I feel like in the beginning when they were babies, they wouldn't understand me. I will feel I will feel like it's irrelevant. Like why would I speak yeah. to a, to someone who doesn't even understand yeah. me? But on the long term, Subhanallah, is uh, is is hurting me right now, you know, because. Because my father, he didn't speak to me in, in Wolof, which is the Senegalese dialect Senegalese that I would dialect. love to be able to speak right now. Mm. Uh, and and it's, it's that thing that you know, but you just you just have too many things going on that you can't really, you know, you can't you can't fix that. But I was uh, I was thinking of getting a Spanish teacher or someone who can talk to them when they when they were in Spain, for example, talking, I mean, in London with my grandma, yeah. with my mother. 
they yeah. were picking up Spanish so quick, you know. But the, the uh, young age, is the, key. the young age is, is the key to learning to learning mm-hmm. languages because your brain's like a sponge, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they say what تعليم في السير كن كن نخشي في الحجر أو كما يقولون يعني. So no. it's it's the best thing to do. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so نعم. So inshallah, I don't know, man. I will <laughs> I will I will try and uh, I will I will definitely have to fix that. But the thing with me is as well is that I've learned. I mean, the, I knew Spanish in, in Catalan. That's my, my, my two main languages, my father and my mm. mom. And so when I was 14, I went to Paris. I was living in yeah. Paris, playing basketball. And so I've yeah. learned French. And then I went oh, to man. Egypt and I've learned, and I've learned uh, Arabic and English. It was really throughout all of this, you know, when I got married. And then I was kind of learning two languages at the same time. But... English was yeah. more of a, in a natural way, just because mm. you know when you're young, you listen to to music and movies and this and that, so yeah. you just pick it up. And then, and then my wife, she kind of just like defined it and and modify modify it basically, and all the the bad things that I I mean even right now every day I I realize that I'm saying things wrong, <laughs> mainly in the videos. Uh. I got to a point where in the beginning I used to record a video and be like. And show it my wife, she's like, What? You just said this and that. I was like, Oh, yeah, that's wrong. But now it's just like, Yeah, let me just put so it. So, you never studied right. English yani, in a classroom setting? Well, you know, when you, when, you do, when, you, when you go to school in Spain, you do do yeah. English as a subject. But, oh, you know, like, <laughs> I got kicked out of like nine schools, I think, when I was younger. So, it was oh, wow. definitely <laughs> not, not, not for me well, studying. But I always remember the teacher in English when I was in Paris, the teacher mm. in, in English. She always used to say, "Oh, your English is the is the best one in the class." Just because mm. you know when you like something, and this I think you should you know every student of knowledge should do this. Like if you like a culture or something, mm. learn the language of it. You know, like through liking that culture. So in terms of, for example, being a Muslim, you know, you like the culture of you know the Prophet Sallam and the language. You should it should be as natural as I did with with English, even though it's you know, in in the hip hop and all of this stuff. But I mean yeah. that's that's how naturally I've I've learned it. Mm-hmm. So Alhamdulillah. Uh okay, so going back to the last question I want to ask you, how of an impact uh has the Arabic language or knowing the Fusha now have had in your life? It's massive, it's massive. It is it's it's affecting my life massively where whereas before I would be dependent on on translations when I was very young, because we depended on translations and picking. The thing is, once you, once you're looking looking for information and it's going through so many filters, mm-hmm. you'll realize that that which you're getting is not the main thing. It's no. not the it's not the raw actual knowledge. No. And once you, you only realize that once you actually become and learn Arabic and become fluent in it, mm-hmm. you'd learn that that which you were depending on before was a completely different level, and it loses its eloquence and its sweetness. So. One thing that's benefited me is that I I can go straight to the source now. Allah alhamd. I mm. can read the Quran. I can understand. It, I can read the books of the Salaf. Read everything which is being said to me, and I can understand it. I can. Yeah, when you're younger and you're there in Taraweeh and you're listening to the Imam and you have people crying and things going on and you're thinking, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. Uh, and your khushu'a, my khushu'a in the Salah, as soon as you learn Arabic, your khushu'a goes to a different level because that which you're saying, you can actually ponder uh, on that which you're. You're saying so i say it's allowed me to study the deen properly straight to the source and not be dependent on people and going through different filters and because what the, the reality is and this is anything in life if you want something you need to go straight to the source don't depend on other people no. so it's important to facilitate yourself with that but it's allowed me to increase my iman in through my salah and understanding what i'm being saying in salah it's allowed me to understand the words of the source of allah and it doesn't get better than that it doesn't no get no 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 and as a side dunyawi issue, it's healthy because it opens up loads of opportunities for work, translations. Um, you're a lot more employable when you know languages. When you know mm. multiple languages, people, yeah, they, they really like that. They put it up, in, up on your pedestal if you know no. the languages. So it's healthy, alhamdulillah, in the deen and in the dunya. No, no, no. Yeah, that's true because the sister that I, I interviewed is Sister Fatima from Houston, Texas. And she said, I mean, learning Arabic, just being for one year in Egypt, it has opened me doors in terms of, you know, jobs here in America. So, you know, definitely when you do something for Allah, Allah will open doors for you 
in that main in that thing that you're doing. So um, so yeah, Alhamdulillah, uh, we got to the end of this interview. Barakallah, thank for your time. Oh, and, uh, and you know, explaining and sharing uh, your stories with us. And uh, and to all the viewers and watchers, I uh, hope you guys liked it. Leave a sure. comment, tell us what you think about it. Uh, you know, whatever. I, I, all, all the time there's people asking for the books that we mentioned and stuff like this. Just ask, and ask that in the comments. Inshallah, we'll, yeah. we'll make that happen. So, Muntasir, inshallah, I'll tell you the best. And I'll tell you the best. So, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.